This is Matt with Jeep ABS and uh, I'm going to show you how to remove uh, anti-lock brake control module from a Cadillac Katerra. If you've got an ABS light coming on in your Katerra, very possibly the uh, control module has gone bad. It's a very common problem on these cars and very expensive to fix, but fortunately there's a way to repair the module. Um, that's what my company specializes in. Uh, cheapabs.com is their website address. All you have to do is remove the module and send it to us and we can fix it and should solve the problem after we reinstall it. So I'm going to show you in this video how to remove the module. It's very difficult on this car compared to some of the other cars that use modules but still definitely doable. The problem that makes this uh, difficult is the where, where the module is located. So uh, in the Katera the ABS module is located very deep in the engine compartment and it's really even hard to see without removing some stuff. I'm going to try to get close and show you here. Um, well, it's still a little bit dark to do that but it's down in here so I'm going to show you how to get it out. The first thing we have to do is get all this junk out of the way. Um, let's get the battery out of the way. To do that first, let's get the distribution box out of the way. So, just pop this cover up and pull this up and out. And that'll give us some room to work with with the battery. To remove the battery, first remove the negative cable, then remove the positive cable. And then down here, there's a retaining nut holding the battery in. Um, and a plate that holds it in place. Remove that and uh, go ahead and take the battery out. So just to reiterate, always remove the black cable, the negative cable, before removing the positive cable. Uh, it's a safety measure. Um, and these are 10 millimeter nuts that hold the cables on. And the bolt down here that holds the plate that holds the battery in place, it's a 13 millimeter nut. So you'll need a um, socket with an extension like this to be able to reach it. So go ahead and remove that and pull the battery Okay, out. so the battery's out. Next thing we want to do is remove or uh, loosen up this uh, power steering reservoir. So this is simply attached with a um, 10 millimeter uh, screw right here that clamps it into place. So go ahead and loosen that with a 10 millimeter socket wrench like this and uh, We'll have some freedom to move this thing around and give some more room to work. So now the power steering fluid reservoir is loose. That'll be important later. Next step is to remove the uh, radiator hose coming from the engine block to the radiator right here. So first remove the clamp that holds it on at the radiator end and then remove the clamp that's kind of hidden down in the engine. That one's a lot more difficult to get to and probably the hardest part of this job. Uh, I recommend using uh, some hose clamp pliers like this to do this. You can pick these up at Sears. Uh, it'll save you a lot of time um, versus trying to use pliers to get these off. So go ahead and go ahead and remove this hose. And dealing with this uh, lower hose clamp on the radiator going to the engine block is probably the well, definitely the hardest part of this job. Uh, it's extremely frustrating. It's expect to spend a lot of time trying to get this thing off, and especially trying to get it back on. You can see what I've done here and kind of wedged the uh, hose clamp pliers and just barely catching the edges of it uh, backwards. So it is possible. Then I used the, once I've locked it in place, I used the flathead screwdriver to pull it back. And now that'll allow me to pull the hose right off and get the hose out of the way. Okay, so we got the hose out. Um, hopefully that wasn't as difficult for you as it always is for me, but I'm guessing it probably was. Don't worry, it's going to be even harder putting it back in. Um, try to use some hose clamp pliers and a screwdriver to just gently get it off the engine if you're having trouble. But the next step is going to be to remove this harness that holds all these uh, large um, electrical harnesses in place. And this is also fairly difficult to remove unfortunately. There is a uh, Phillips head screw buried way down in here that secures this whole thing in. Um, it may be hidden by some of these cables, so try to move them out of the way and find it. 
and just remove that screw and this whole thing should lift up and out. Okay, let's do some rearranging now and pull all this stuff up over it this way and out of the way. Give us a better look at the module. You can see here I've already removed the top two screws right here, the T20 Torx screws. Those are relatively accessible. Um, the next thing you want to do is remove the electrical harness and I've already started pulling it out and you can see uh, it's this pink colored uh, plastic thing. It's got a little pull tab on it. This is kind of hard to get to but the way you get it out is just get a flathead screwdriver and just kind of gently work the thing up and out of there with it. And the uh, key word here is gently. Um, initially it's probably going to be kind of stuck on there so you'll have to wiggle it back and forth when break it free. Once it breaks free it should come out but you do not want to break those pull tabs because if you do there's not going to be any way any easy way of getting that harness off. So now we can just pull that harness up and off and set it to the side. So now the harness is off and you can see the uh, electrical pins where it connects. The next step is to remove the bottom four screws that hold this module on to the pump. This thing right here is the pump and these are the brake lines going into it. We don't want to disconnect those because if you do then uh, you have to bleed the brake system and it's not really necessary. So what we can do instead, because there's no way that we're going to be able to access those bottom four screws from where we're working with this thing, is we're going to unbolt the whole unit from its cage. And you can see the whole thing surrounded by this, this cage and it's held in with these two bolts on each side. Um, I believe they're 13 millimeter bolts. So what we're going to want to do is remove both of these from each side then we're going to be able to lift the unit up out of its cage and rotate it so that we can access it with a uh, flathead sc um, uh, a screwdriver. So go ahead and remove those okay, two what bolts. I've done here is I've pushed I've, I've removed this, this 13 millimeter bolt right here and you can see the the nut that it came off of, or the screw that it came off the nut came off of called it a bolt, sorry, it's a nut. These 13 millimeter nuts, they came off of this, uh, these screws right here. And these things are just held into the pump. Uh, they're just pressed in with rubber grommets. And they might come loose and they might come out, just make sure you don't lose them. But I've taken my screwdriver and I've pushed this metal panel back some. It's, it's kind of flimsy and very easy to push back. Uh, go ahead and push it out of the way, it'll give you some room. And we're gonna lift this whole unit up Okay, so what I've done now, is I've pulled the unit up and out of its cage and I've rotated it upwards. So now you can see that we've removed these two first screws already. But now we've got access to the last six screws. Let me see if I can get a good shot here. So, screw here, screw down here, screw there, screw down there. You can't really see it from here. But go ahead and move the unit as you need to and take those last four screws out. And again, you can see that I haven't disconnected the brake lines at all. All I've done is kind of just bent them a, just a tad bit to move them up here. It's, 
Well, they're they're hard lines. They aren't, they aren't really bending at all. But we we there's some play in it that allows it to move, allows us to move the unit like this, and that's what makes this possible. So you're gonna have to really try to get this power steering fluid reservoir out of the way to be able to do this. But once you get to this point, you should be able to remove all the screws and uh, get the module off. Um, after you remove the screws, you see this connector, this tab right here, this is a clip. Take a, take a flathead screwdriver and just very gently pry this out and there's a two wire power connector that comes out the bottom of this. That's the last thing you'll have to remove to remove the module from this. So now we've removed all six of the screws, removed that small two wire clip and two wire power connector on the bottom and now we can sl slide the module right off the pump. And it, it should slide right off of there. And now finally we have the module out of the car. And uh, this is all that you need to send us. Um, just go to the website, the bottom of the screen, cheapabs.com and uh, click on the order button and fill out the order form and they'll send you instructions on how to get this to us. I'll fix it when I get it and send it back to you and all you have to do is put it back in and uh, put everything back together. Um, put in, put in terms of putting things back together, don't forget to uh, hook the two wire power connector back up because if you forget that it's going to be pretty much impossible to get back down in there again without taking this all apart again. Um, and uh, the radiator hose, you're going to have a hard time getting that back on the engine. Just uh, just be patient with it and you'll get there eventually. Um, but make sure that it's clipped all the way on and the hose is all the way on. You don't want that thing coming off. Um, but when you put the repaired module back on the car, it, everything should work. It should be a plug and play installation. If you have any trouble, feel free to uh, send me an email from the website. Thanks for checking this out.